What's up guys, I'm Hub Smash, and I wanted to take a minute to go over my microphone setup and how I do my audio for my recordings as well as my live streams. I've got a lot of people that have complimented the voice audio, the vocals that I do, um, mostly because my voice sounds so delicious. No, I'm just joking. It, but but people have actually, you know, they've they've been happy with the audio quality that I have, and I'm able to make that consistent between recordings and live streams. And I wanted to show how I do that with Adobe Audition. Um, this is Adobe Audition CC 2017. That's part of the Creative Cloud Suite. Um, you get it if you have the full Creative Cloud, Cloud Suite, which I use for Adobe Premiere for my editing. I use Adobe Photoshop for my thumbnails, and then I use this for my audio. And all of the tools together are great, so I highly rec recommend it, but that's besides the point. Um, this assumes that you have it. You, If you don't have it, you can get a free trial uh, over at adobe.com. I think it's a 30-day trial, and you can try it out and see if this works for you. Um, so before I get all into the details, I want to just talk about the pros and cons of doing this way. Uh, basically the pros are that it's faster for editing. You're not going to spend time editing uh, your voice really at all. Uh, it's already going to have the effects applied to it. Um, it sounds really good. As far as I'm concerned, the specifically the adaptive noise reduction is an amazing effect. Um, and it really does a lot of good work for you. Um, even though it doesn't have a lot of, um, noise in my room. Um, it, it, it still does a, a good job of picking up the little noise that there is of mostly just computer fans. Um, and also it's consistent sound for your live streams. Um, uh, now there's two cons that I can think of, uh, two of them are being, uh, latency. It adds about a hundred milliseconds or a bit more to your, uh, to your vocals. So sometimes you have to compensate for that. Like for example, this webcam that I'm using, I have an, uh, a little bit of, uh, emulated latency or I've added on a delay to that to just compensate for that. So my mouth is still lining up with the words and everything like that. Um, the other thing is CPU resources. It takes a small amount. I have a i7 4790K. It uses about 4% of that. Um, so it's not a huge overhead, but it, it is there. And if you have a computer that can't handle it, you might run into some trouble. What you'll run into is audio kind of degrading. It'll kind of clip in and out or something like that. That's how you know that your uh, buffer is not big enough. So now let's try to explain exactly how this works. So I'm going to just go over. Do not want that on. Um, I'm just going to go over it really quickly. And we're just going to try and look at how this works specifically. So what I have is my microphone here, you know, that's my microphone and it connects into a virtual audio input. This is just a virtual audio input, right? Then the virtual audio input is taken in to Adobe Audition, Audition, and then it goes out to a virtual output. So instead of taking, and then, sorry, and then it goes out to OBS. What a beautiful drawing. <laughs> so instead of taking your mic input, putting it into OBS, and then like editing it to make it sound good, what this does is it, it comes into a virtual audio thing. It gets edited by uh, Adobe Audition. It gets processed. It gets different effects added to it. It goes to another virtual output and OBS is capturing from the virtual output. That's a simplified way, <laughs> I mean, I don't know, of, of doing this, uh, trying to explain it, but I wanted everyone to understand kind of how that works. And then I'll, I'll show you how you set it up. And so the way we set it up is we go into Adobe Audition. Actually, first, first what we have to do is download a virtual audio cable. And so that's at this site here. And I'll put a link in the description to that. Um, before you get this actually though, you want to have a good microphone. Um, I use the Rode podcaster. I highly recommend it. I'll put a link to that in the description. There are other options. Um, this method works really well for USB mics because you can't, uh, do, uh, an interface that's like a hardware interface with the USB mics and then have it, uh, you know, make adjustments to the gain and different things like that. An EQ on the fly that you can do with XLR. Um, XLR setup is a better way to go. Um, because right now, like I'm kind of capped out as, as I can make it sound as good as this. And that's about as good as I can do for my US, USB setup, excuse me. So 
Uh, I recommend trying to go XLR, but if you want to go USB, uh, the Rode Posca- Podcaster is a really good microphone. There are other audio technical ones as well. Maybe I'll link a few of those in the description that I know are good. Um, so get a good microphone or a decent microphone at least. You don't have to spend a couple hundred bucks like I did. You could you could spend maybe you know seventy or eighty, maybe a hundred dollars. Try to get a dynamic microphone if you can. Once you have your microphone, you've got virtual audio cable set up. You go into Adobe Audition. Uh, what you want to do is go into your uh, preferences and your audio hardware. And for your default input, you want to have the Rode Podcaster reel. So this is my physical Rode Podcaster. And the output is my cable input. This is a this is a, not the one that you'll see in yours, but this is another virtual audio cable. But you want to have a virtual audio cable here. And this will be a virtual audio cable input. I also have voice meter installed, so it's not going to look exactly the same. Uh, and then you have your master clock set to your output or your, sorry, your cable input and latency. I set it to 120 because sometimes at hundred, I noticed, uh, some, some issues with it. Um, and I have no problems on 120. I can actually probably drop it to 80 and I probably won't have many problems, but you want to uh, play around with this and, ex- and while your computer is under load. So while you're playing a game or while you're streaming, um, uh, or like a test stream, you try to see if if this impacts you at all. Um, but I, rec- I recommend starting at around 80 and then working your way up. Any lower than that, and you're probably going to have issues. So you set that up like that. And this is just in a new blank audio track. And basically what you do is you prime it to record. And you want your default stereo input on. Uh, that's the Rode Podcaster. It'll be on default. And then for your output, you want it to be a stereo output to your virtual audio cable. And then once you're done that, you're pretty much ready to go. Um, you want to make sure that the live monitoring is enabled and you're all set. Now, what you want to do is you want to apply uh, effects to it. And you can use different kind of effects. Um, you really have to play with this and I could make a whole video about just the effects. So I'm not going to go into them too detailed here, but what I recommend trying is the podcast voice preset. Now I don't want to click it right now because it'll mess up my voice, but the podcast voice preset is a pretty good one. There are some effects that will, um, it'll kind of cause extra latency and it will add additional latency to what you're already doing. So some of them do that adaptive noise reduction is one of them. That is the best one. I also recommend doing some amplification, some compression, some parametric equalization, as well as using a hard limiter. So I'm doing EQ, compression, hard limiting, um, and everything like that all from within Adobe Audition before the microphone audio is even picked up by OBS. So it's all done. It gets to OBS. The downside to that is that when you're in editing your, your, your content, your audio, you do not have the raw audio, technically speaking. Uh, you do not have the raw direct uh, audio from your microphone. You have the processed audio in addition. Now, if you're an audio engineer, that's not the best way to do things. But because we're not audio engineers, we're creating video gaming content. We don't need to do it that way. What this does is this allows me to not have to apply uh, audio effects in Audacity or even directly in Premiere. I don't have to do any of that. Once my audio track's done, I simply boost the gain up by like two or three decibels and I drop and I just, I'm done it. That's it. It's totally done. And my audio is consistent across all of my things. The other thing I recommend doing is doing a noise gate in OBS. Um, This is what it sounds like with my noise gate off right now. Um, and I also wanted to show you what it sounds like with the effects off. So let's actually turn off the effects. So I'm just going to, I think I can just toggle the power here and it will turn off all the effects. And this is what my voice sounds like with all the effects off. So I've got all the effects off and this is what my microphone sounds like just by default. And it sounds decent, um, but it's very flat. Um, you can notice that there's more background noise, that kind of thing, just of the the fans in the background. And uh, this is what it sounds like with it with it turned on. And we're back, sounding like an actual professional, hopefully. So that's it. Um, this was just a hard, fast kind of uh, tutorial on how to do this. Let me know if you want me to go more in depth. 
I kind of expect that you have some experience with audition or with uh, your microphone and computers in general. I haven't gone way into depth. If this is something you want to see a step-by-step in-depth tutorial about, let me know. Uh, I could definitely look into making that. And I hope you liked the video. If you did, click that like button. It really helps with the channel. If you want to see more of the stuff I make, consider subscribing. Thanks so much, guys, and take care.